I had run into one small problem when the motherboard when this closes you can see that capacitor right there on the motherboard was hitting the DVD drive at first I didn't trim this off so it went all the way down here and so that was hitting and my DVD drive didn't come all the way out it came out to about right there and so I trimmed off what I could to make it flush with the DVD drive and it still didn't fit so I pulled the DVD drive out cut the rest of this out well not the rest of it but you know cut more of it out and then I uh, started looking online I had a Pioneer DVD drive 7 inches um, you know depth I looked up you know manufacturer specs to what they called it was you know, measured 7 inches so then I started looking at different DVD drives and looking at the manufacturer specs and I found a LG and the model number is um, don't uh, it's a GH 22 NS 30 and it's six and a half inches deep so it gives me an extra half inch went ahead and trimmed this a little extra but now I don't know if you can see but I've got probably less than a quarter inch of clearance but that's all I needed so we've got everything ready still gotta stick the memory in it um, and eventually I will buy some more memory I just happen to have two one gig sticks so I'll put that in there for now got the video card I put a firewire card in it because one of my video cameras is firewire and I'm gonna have to stick with this small heat sink at least for now I had a one of the uh, you know thicker Intel heat sinks, but it's going to put it too close to the power supply when it closes. So we'll use a short one. If I decide to overclock it, I'll find a better short heat sink. Maybe, you know, a type like uh, they use in the 1U servers. And that's about it it's ready to go back together I had to pull the front panel back off to get the DVD drive out when I found that problem but other than that should be able to put the front panel back on it and go I can't remember if I showed the right here but basically what I did for the hard drive light the original thing over here looked like this one it just had this little stub on it to push the button that's right there so I cut it off and it actually had a hollow part going through it to the front clear part of the panel the button the front clear part of the button and I guess maybe on some models this one doesn't have it but maybe right next to the button there must have been like a little LED that you know would light up so I just drilled it out just a little bit bigger shoved the LED in it and just hot glued it I also hot glued the button so it wouldn't move that's it so should be done the next step will be trying to install OS X on this thing um, last night I gave a go, you know, give it a try, and I had an error, so I have to see what the problem is. It may be, I need to adjust the BIOS setting.
BIOS settings. I now have a working Hackintosh. In this case, I'm using that keyboard and mouse right now. And here it is. Already got iLife installed. And everything seems to be working perfect on it. 